Hello, and welcome to the Nin Post, where we study how ancient wisdom can be applied to today's situations. Um, today, we're going to be looking at uh, some of the stages of learning, um, or uh, the experiential side of things, what you would look to experience and uh, to know what stage you're in based upon the experiences you're having. <clears throat> today and in subsequent days so there's five stages and each one um, plays off the previous one uh, before we get into that let's uh, take a minute to understand the three areas of knowledge you've got the stuff you know the stuff you know about but you don't really know like you, you just know it exists and then the most important thing the stuff you don't know that you don't know exists um, if you did not know about the Higgs boson particle now you do but that's it all you know is that thing and if it sparks your curiosity you'll do some typing and searching and find out about his Higgs boson and um, how long ago it was discovered and you know gravity Einstein all that good stuff anyway um, uh, let's also recognize that the largest group area of knowledge is in the stuff you don't know you don't know that's huge compared to any one human being's existence and knowledge of that existence it's small um, you know just start uh, looking at things that you didn't look at before and you'll see like like the, you know everything from nuclear physics to uh, animal tracking and, and man tracking which is a thing too a lot of people don't know that um, man tracking is a very specific part. Um, knowing that in the track, if you look, know where to look, know what to look for, and the track's not devastated, you can see exactly, approximately, how much food's in his stomach. Whether the deer was turned left or right hand faced at the time he made that track. Anyway. There's a lot we don't know. That being said, the introduction to that knowledge is where we start. You previously did not know the existence of this subject or had only a rudimentary understanding of it. So you, you, you didn't know about it or all of a sudden Higgs boson. Now you know something, a collection of sounds and syllables that created a specific meaning. If it sparks your interest, you move on to the collection stage. Now, the collection stage is pretty long, or it can be, depending on what kind of subject matter you're, you're talking about. But um, through research, study, class lessons, insightful conversations with uh, knowledgeable individuals, and presentations, you learn more about the subject. You're just collecting um, more and more and more and more stuff. And it is that. That's that's all it is. Stuff, brain stuff. Um, because it's because it's book stuff, right? You're 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 going into and writing it down or reading it, you know, and it's just stuff to add, right? Now the brain. Um, my opinion the brain isn't designed or not designed but isn't um, its purpose isn't to store information that's what books are for notebooks notebooks um, any other media device that you use to uh, type in Microsoft Word or, or uh, Google Docs or whatever that's that's the storage medium brain is brains purpose is for ideas um, 
third stage, which is a an even uh, larger stage than collection stage, is the experimentation stage. The experimentation stage is you've got this body of knowledge, this body of information, and you want to turn it into knowledge. And so you test it out. You test it and test it and test it until test it in this situation, test it in this situation, test it in that situation. Test it in the same situation, but do it differently. Right? In martial arts, we know about that. That's a common, common deal. So this stage involves taking what you have learned in stage two and testing it to see what is true about it and what is not true about it. Note, your, ex your experimentation requires some base understanding of the experimentation process and the preconcepts involved in interpreting the results of the experiment. Lots of technical knowledge there. Really what that means is if you're learning to drive a car for the first time, right? So you know the gas pedal, the brake pedal, and if you were being taught right, the clutch pedal. Um, that's, you know, collection. You know those things. Knowing how to, if you're stuck, how to put the gear in second to crawl up out of that ditch. That's part of experimentation stage. Knowing that you should is actually part of the next stage. We'll talk about that in a second. But knowing that you can is part of the experimentation stage where you're trying out your skills. Okay? Lots of young people uh, learning to drive believe they already get it, having a very basic understanding of the experimentation stage of driving, of learning to drive. Very, very basic. Um, and this isn't a put down or anything like this. It's, it's, it's a, as I see it, it's a... Uh, discrepancy between um, uh, clear understanding of knowledge and a clear need, a youngster's clear need for um, confidence, self-confidence. They want to be more confident in what they're doing, but they're not, don't have their skills aren't where their, their knowledge is, and so they want to be more confident, but they're not. And that discrepancy creates accidents. That's what I believe. The discrepancy creates accidents. So I believe all accidents, no matter what you're talking about, involve a lack of attention. Um, in fact, I believe the correction or the, uh, the thing that would have prevented the accident would be the uh, add attention back into it and all of a sudden um, you don't have an accent oh every now and again you gotta learn to pause for the cause guys get yourself big day slow day doesn't matter get yourself some uh, Earl Grey some warm not to be Earl Grey but some warm soothing drink and use that as your focus take a moment be present and pause for the cause cause can be whatever you want it to be hydration or all the people that never came back, all the warriors that never came back from whatever war you want to choose. It could be whatever you want, but just make sure to pause. Um, so we're, we're, you've been introduced to the subject. You've collected information about that subject. You've used experimentation to turn that information into, into knowledge, workable knowledge. Next stage is integration. Um, now your informal informational study, along with your experimental knowledge, combine to create wisdom. 
as you start to become the subject. A lot of people, uh, this is a rarely attained level in most people. You, If you look at, um, see if I can get a good example, uh, Andrew Huberman, uh, he's got a great podcast, YouTube channel. Uh, but you can tell, especially in moments, he, he uh, highly scientific guy, uh, high levels of degrees, does experiments all the time. And you can tell he lives his purpose. And certain times during um, the, uh, the podcast interviews or whatever, he'll talk about why he does this. And in the beginning, too, he does, he, he touches on it, but he doesn't really get into details about it. But he believes these not these pieces of knowledge about what science has created, or created has discovered about um, our societies, not just social understanding, but biochemical as well. Um, and what that could mean for us as Joe Blow off the street that might not know much at all uh, could get this knowledge and go, I can use this. This is useful to me. Science is. It's the purpose of science is to be useful. Um, again, this is this is my YouTube. You know, you don't have to like it. Um, and so the integration where you become the subject. So Andrew Huberman is a good one. Um, another one, Jocko Willink. Uh, if you see um, his early podcasts and his early um, uh, videos, whatever he's doing, it like like videos of a long time ago. You'll see he was a certain different kind of person. Now, his most recent ones, he's grown into. And there's one cool thing about Jocko is he's, uh, um, if you've studied his life and listened to what the things he says that he's talking about, um, you realize that the man specifically does not, like, he is not afraid to give up who he thinks he is to become a better human being. And that's the part of what makes uh, me drawn to him is the fact that um, humility is a strong part of this, but um, the draw, the need to share with other human beings specific types of knowledge that is very useful um, is a part of his daily life. So, You'll see he becomes, you see him, he's different. You could tell he's a different human being um, uh, on his path. And so he becomes what he needs to become in the moment to make that moment the best moment that could be for other people. Now he recognizes, as uh, many wise people, he recognizes that uh, helping other people help help like helps him. It gives him things that are um, would be called intangible, but he values them greatly. Uh, so uh, it's good stuff. So uh, one of the things is that Andrew Huberman and Jocko Willink have a podcast. They they interviewed each other one time. That's an interesting one. Enough name dropping, guys. When you have collected and experimented enough, it starts becoming a part of your life, a part of who you are. The actions you take, the, the words you choose to make, the, the how you take them, how you make those words, how you take those actions, they create or they are expressions of someone who has become a thing. Uh, so that's a rare occurrence. One more stage. That was four. Guys, bond. That's the last of the stages. Once you get to there, which you probably don't know you'll ever get there, um, you feel such a deep connection with the material that you cannot imagine your life without it. So in stage four, you start to become the subject, and other people will recognize that. In the fifth stage, you are that subject. Um, Einstein, maybe, would have been one. Um, 
greats from the past, Lao Tzu, uh, uh, Siddhartha Katama, these people that were so great and so connected with what they were doing and who they, who they grew to become. They, become that, they became that thing, whatever that thing was. Uh, Jesus, like if you want to get into religious aspects. Uh, so they became this so much that not being what they were is impossible to think about. The brain locks up. Um, it's a it's a it's a cognitive dissonance whenever you try to think that um, you know the world isn't round, which it's it's not circular. It is not a sphere, a complete sphere. A lot of people don't know that. It's wider at the equator than it is pole to pole. If you're measuring prime meridian versus equator, those two dimensions are different. So that's all I got for you. This is a simple nimpost. Um, take that and apply it. See, this is this is where you can apply it in your real life. You're like if you're learning something, you're learning bushcraft carving, right? So you're getting introduced to it. But right now, if you've never heard about bushcraft carving in your entire life, now you do know that what, what that word. Uh, get on the internet, start collecting information, search terms, not just bushcraft and not just carving, not just bushcraft carving. Those are three search terms. You get, once you watch a couple of videos and look at pictures and things like this, you start thinking about edge grinds and how to sharpen your knife. And which one is better than... You know, is the Puko shape better than the um, uh, North American clip point shape, buoy style? Or um, what's a secondary grind? And, and what's a, the difference between a full flat grind and a, a Scandinavian grind? And why are they important? Um, uh, versus a convex grind. Uh, what makes them useful? And then you start getting into... Um, uh, researching that's for the knife it's just for the blade you research some of the wood some of the woods you would and how the the grain is different based upon which wood you've got and whether or not it's green wood so green wood carving and, and dead wood carving are two totally different things and you would not want to dead wood carve your day in your life just saying um and then um cured wood which is wood cut and then cured in a place like your garage or something like that, let it dry it up naturally as opposed to out there in the environment. Um, then you get your experimentation stage where you're like, I've done my, I've done my research, I've done my collection, I'm going to go on to Amazon and get me a BPS knife and see what goes on. So you get it and um, then you get some wood, some green wood, maybe in the backyard or whatever, and you start carving on it your experimentation you learn the notches of a tri-stick and um, there are lots of notches on a tri-stick don't go for any more than don't if you're just starting off starting off on this don't do more than like I don't know um, seven eight nine notches when you're first learning it you'll learn the other ones later on I mean there's there's engineering notches where you learn um, where you learn to uh, create uh, an axle and wheel assembly. Or um, I've seen people carve a fishing rod with reel. All wood. 100% wood. Except for the cord, which is plant fiber. So, all wood. All plant. Um, and so that's the experimentation stage. Then you get to the integration stage where you've done the bushcraft carving so much that you can come up with specific carving dimensions on the fly as needed when you're out there camping. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Whip, whip. And then someone looks at you doing that and they go, 
Do it again. <laughs> and you say, I'm not a dancing monkey. I don't do that. Um, anyway. Uh, so that's experimentation and integration. And all of a sudden integration comes where you're not camping. You haven't camped in a week or so and you're starting to feel the itch and you have to go out in the backyard to carve on something because it's a thing you have to do. Creating, um, carving spoons even, a wood carved spoon, hand carved wood spoon. It's a nice spoon. So, uh, whatever you're learning, learn it and focus on it. Don't let it be something that you like for a moment and then throw it to the side. Picture this wheel um, with spokes in the center, or center hole. And at the end of each spoke is another hole, another dot. And all the subjects you like are a dots around this circle. Bear with me for a minute. The one you're learning on now is in the center. And when you're done learning with it, learning about it, or for the moment, and you're like, uh, I've got enough ninjutsu for today. Tomorrow's another day. So I'm going to go learn about the weather and how that impacts camping. Swap them out. And learn about cumulus and alto cumulus clouds and how um, how storms are fueled by temperature, not wind. Wind comes from temperature. Like <coughs> so, learn as much as you can. Don't stop doing that, because then when you get old. Someone will look at you and say, that could have been a resource for knowledge. And now he's, I don't know, rooting for the Patriots. Nothing wrong with the Patriots, but if you get distracted by the things put here to distract us, you deserve it. Then again, if you get distracted by the things that they're trying to distract us from, you deserve that too. Anyway, lots of stuff to talk to talk about tonight. Tonight, lots of things to think about. If I've said anything to offend you, pay no attention because I don't matter. If I've said anything that sparks some interest, pay no attention to me because I don't matter. Flame that spark, though. Hmm. All right, guys. Good night. This is a long one. Don't forget to pause for the calls. If you've learned nothing today, learn that. Good night, y'all.